Today's episode of The Mom Game is brought to you by our friends at Gateway Buick GMC at LBJ and Jupiter. I know that buying a car can be stressful, but not at Gateway because their slogan is, Gateway's got it. And just what does that mean? Well, it means Gateway's got a wide selection of new Buicks, GMCs, and GM-certified used vehicles, all competitively priced. Gateway's got it. In these busy times, you want a dealer who makes things easy and convenient. Well, guess what? Gateway's got it. When you log on to gatewaybuickgmc.com, look for the shop, click, drive button. This allows you to shop from the comfort of your home, and who doesn't want that? In fact, it's as easy as one, two, three. One, select your vehicle. Two, create your offer. Three, schedule your delivery. And on top of all this, Gateway Buick GMC offers complimentary car washes for life. So when you want a dealer who has it all, Gateway's got it. You can find them online at gatewaybuickgmc.com or shop in person at LBJ and Jupiter. GMC, we are professional grade. Experience the new Buick. I'm Emily Jones. She is Julie Dobbs. This is episode 84 by our estimation. Yeah, I think so. We're going with. We're going to try to keep track of it in a very professional, organized manner. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that'll. That's definitely going to work out. So yeah, it's. Uh, it's. We're going to talk some sports. We're going to talk some uh, mom mom things. Yep. And, I have more uh, mom fails to add to the list. Yeah, and Shocker. it's been a while since it's just been the two of us. Yeah. Did we get to wrap and catch up? We're shooting again in the morning, which is why we are sans booze. I know. Um, we'll get back to that very soon. I know. The booze. I, I don't like when there's that, that void in the I, show. I know, but it's it's 10 a.m. You I, know, oh, I know. We're shooting in a t- at 10 a.m. It, 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 I, mean, I think us. we're more fun, though, when we're a little bit. We are, and it would wake us up Intox- a little bit. Not intoxicated, but just feeling loose. Right. Just a little, yeah. a little feeling Coffee good. Coffee just doesn't. Yeah. Do the same thing. Okay, so hockey has started back. You're mm-hmm. now in the throes of mm. Kelly traveling. Yep. Shit's going really well, I I assume. Um yeah, yeah. no. Um Okay, well let's let's talk sports first. Let's, I know, I'm trying to think me me or the stars, which one's doing better. Eh, we're about it's the debatable. same. Yeah, we're about the same. Um the stars. Uh, they split their first road trip on the road, uh, two and two. So they came back 500 from that. That was that week long, like where it was like my shock to the system of being alone again with the kids for a week out of the gates. Um, and then they came home and they had their home opener. I brought the kids and it was so fun. They're at a fun age now where they can really, and I feel like understand the game a little bit and they're really into it. Um, and the Dallas Stars won at home in front of all of their fans, in front of a sold-out crowd the first time in, like, 19 months or something like Yay. that. That they had had a full arena at the American Airlines Center. So it just felt really good. It was like, this is how sports should be. This is what we need. We need a full house. The players, you know, they said all the right things when they were in the bubble and when they were playing in empty arenas. But after that game, like, Tyler Sagan was really cute. He was like, this is what it's supposed to be like. We could feel them. Like, they, you know, they give us that next level, especially in overtime. And it was an overtime win um, at home. And it was cute. He said that we have a very, what do you call it? He said, they, we have a very undercover crowd. And I went back and, like, rewound it. I was like, I think he means, like, underrated. <laughs> Undercover. <laughs> Undercover. Bless like, him. oh, Tyler, you're the, you're just oh. the best. <laughs> you're so cute. <laughs> That's what he said in his press call. I rewound it like three times. I was like, Undercover. Undercover. Like, everybody's like secret agents here in Dallas. Um, but no, it is. It's like an underrated crowd, and I think the NHL guys really appreciate it um, when they can be in Dallas and, and have the kind of fan support that you might get somewhere where hockey is the number one thing in the city. Um, the Stars fans were ready to fill that arena and that was a good win then they went on the road um monday and played monday night in columbus and mm. <laughs> got drilled <laughs> i did think- not i listened so i was on my way home from a tasting in abilene uh-huh. and good i li- i was listening uh-huh. to josh and razor on the radio it did not sound like things were going very well there no, in Columbus. No, no. It things. seemed like there was some yelling and... Uh, Tensions were high. Yeah. Rick Bonus does not seem uh, very pleased with yeah. the effort that his team showed. No, I sent you this clip that John Boy, who's famous for doing like baseball breakdowns, um, got word of the 
I guess you could call it a meltdown that Rick Bonus had on the bench. He lit into he them. He lit into the guys and just was like f bombs were flying and told them all to f off. And <laughs> <laughs> but I think the gist of what he was saying it was like, "Where's your effing heart?" is what he was saying. Yeah. Like, play with heart. Play like you mean it. Play right. like you want to be here and like you want to win this game. And I don't know what it is with this group, but sometimes he really does like have a hard time getting them going. And and because the style and the brand of hockey that he coaches and that the stars have been playing now for a few seasons is hard. It's hard work. Like it's grinded out hockey, like win the battles, win the puck battles in the corners. And you got to play really strong defensively. And it's not as much fun as maybe we saw in the past with like Lindy Ruff, who um, just let the guy, let the guys, even the defensemen like get on the attack more and a little bit more of an open ice kind of feel back and forth, back and forth. A lot of scoring chances. You give up a lot of chances. We're not doing that anymore. And he's still, I feel like trying to beat these guys down with what he wants them to do. And, and you can't half ass it. I mean, I don't think you can ever really in professional sports, but um, in hockey and especially in this system that he's implemented, like you, you can't half ass anything. And I think they were doing that in Columbus on the road. Um, I, they've always struggled. I feel like in Columbus, I feel like it's always just like a bad feeling when they go there and they usually, they usually lose, but to see him get that mad and it was what that was game six um, of the season. So not really what you want to see yeah, early on early. in the season. And you're like, damn, if he's that mad, like there's something else, like there's something underlying that's really frustrating him. Maybe like they were only down two goals at that point in the game. They've definitely come back from a two goal deficit multiple times. That's not something that, you know, you don't expect them to do. So to be that pissed, cause that really resonates, you know, with the guys. And, and I think the, the thought was that it would really jolt them and like wake them up and yeah. like get them going. And it didn't happen. Um, and Braden Holtby didn't, you know, save them. Like maybe he had at the home opener. I don't know that they deserved to win that game either, but they did because they had good goaltending and they finished it off in overtime. Um, so we're at a little bit of a, don't know what we're going to get this season. Still, uh, Tyler is, you know, he's coming off of a huge, injury surgery same with alexander radulov maybe they don't look 100 percent right yet um john klingberg just had his first game back after dealing with an injury that happened before the season started and he didn't look quite right the first goal was like a, definitely on him uh the first blue jackets goal and he said as much after the game so we'll see i mean that's a really long season i felt like people were really stars twitter was really freaking out last night um and our friend Bob Sturm even said on Twitter, he's like, you know, I just have to put this out there again. That bubble run might have just been like, you know, lightning in a bottle. Yes. Lightning in a bottle. Like they got on a run in the bubble. <laughs> it was like, you know, not who this team really is. And this is who this team really is, which kind of sucks. If that's what everybody and like all these it's people early. were yeah. agreeing. Yeah. Yeah. It's early. Um, Will you please fix your headphone cords? What? You fi fix your, yeah, there you go. It was real. <laughs> Just right. that it was twisty? It was twisty, and when I looked at your monitor, it was all twisty, and it Do was Do you know anything that I've said in no. the last, like, five minutes, or were you just looking at those damn headphones? No, no I mean, I was <laughs> I was absolutely focused on all of the hockey talk. No, you weren't. Um, no, I was. You, you, did, you brought up a lot of really good points, and I, am, I, I feel like I'm more invested in the stars now because of you. Okay, good. Um, but yeah, it's just, we've got a lot of, I mean, they've got a lot of season to play there. It's do. fine. That everybody needs to chill the F out. Like I agree. Same way with the Mavericks when everybody freaked out when they got completely drilled in their first game. And I mean, it's, they play, you play 82, like it's, yeah. it, it's a lot of freaking games. Yeah. You just can't, you know, you can't, now you can't get in a giant hole. It's like we always say in baseball, you can't win a division in April, but you can absolutely lose one. Mm -hmm. Um, cause if you get out to a really rough start and you get behind the eight ball so early, it's just, it's hard to yeah. work yourself out of it. And so if you can, you know, hover around 500 on the road and if you can take care of business on home ice or home court, th that formula seems to work out, but you know, it's just the, the day and age that we live in where everyone jumps to conclusions really fast. I know. Because everyone wants to know, okay, what is this team? Who are the stars? Right. How many games are they going to win? Right. Same with the Mavericks. Same. I mean, you know, it's like, why, let's just, it sounds so cheesy. Like, let's just enjoy the run. Same way with the Cowboys. Like, you know, everybody's like, how good is this team? And blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm just enjoying the fact that they're actually relevant 
that they they're gonna win the division, and it's a, like we've talked about before. It's a likable team. Same way with the Stars. Same way with the Mountain. Like these are all very likable teams. They are. Um, and so I think it's it's uh, it's a fun time right now to be a sports fan in this market. It really is. And so I'm like, I'm just gonna try to enjoy it. And well, and it wasn't a good. You know, I mean, the Rangers have not provided us a whole lot of. You know, things to be encouraged about uh, in the last couple of years. And yeah. hopefully that will soon change. But in the meantime, during my off season, I'm going to enjoy these, um, you know, hometown team. Yeah. Runs. And, and they say it's like the most, you know, the hardcore fans are the ones that make their voices heard. The for most. sure. For sure. So it's those people that are like, you know, I don't think like. I think there's still a lot of excitement around the stars and the Mavs and especially obviously the Cowboys. Um, but those people that watch this team night in night out, and they just are the ones that I think start to feel a little bit beat down when they're seeing a lot of the same problems. Well, With and I can, listen, I, I'm a Texas tech fan. <laughs> I can identify like it's yeah. very, you, and it's, you get so defeated and so like, you know, it's just, it's oh, hard. It's very woe is me. It's like yes. nothing is ever going to go in and my favor. And it's the teams you care about the most that yeah. you are, that you, you take it so hard, you know, it's just, it's hard yes. to enjoy it's a double anything. Sword. Yeah. That's why I think if we want to talk Cowboys a little bit, that's why I think this season feels so like it's almost like an anomaly like usually you find a little bit of success with the stars or the Mavs but the Cowboys are just kind of there you know around 500 right lately like so the fact that they're uh five and one now heading in off of the bye week is really freaking exciting and yeah. the, the the conversation around the Cowboys has changed like you know going into the season it was can this defense bounce back? They're coming off of a historically bad season. And is Mike McCarthy the guy? And maybe, you know, is this his last season? Is he going to be, you know, out the door on after his second season? Um, is Dak going to be okay coming back from his injury? Like, what if, what if, what if? All these things. And now the narrative is, like, completely different. And it's like, can the Cowboys win it all? Like, what's it going to take for this team to lose? Like, what is, you know... How has the defense improved so much? It, are they going to take a step back or are they going to continue to be this consistent throughout the season? Because I think that's the biggest difference. So it's really exciting um, watching these games and they've been really entertaining games. Yeah. Um, the win over the Patriots, I feel like was like that was a huge, like gutty win that really can show the character of the team. Um that they did and Dak Prescott leading the way comeback win, all of that. So then they had a bye to rest and that's a good thing because Dak finished that game uh, in a boot at mm -hmm. the press conference afterwards uh, af with a calf injury that apparently happened like on the last play. Um, so they will play this weekend in Minnesota on Sunday. So he got like a full two weeks to recover. And now the questions are, is, is he going to be ready to play? Is he going to be ready to practice? If he's not, then... Well, That's and here's the deal, but it's a very manageable injury. Mm -hmm. Like you, you can design the, the plays that you call. It's not like it's his throwing arm. Yes. It's not like it's his hand. It's not, I mean, and is, is he more of a threat when he's mobile? Absolutely. When he's got that tool in his belt, but it's not, he doesn't have to rely on it. Dak is a very, very efficient yeah. passer. I mean, you, you know, you just don't, you don't have designed rollouts. Right. You just, I mean, you just, you adjust your game just plan. Just channel your Tom Brady and right. don't and, move around much. Right. And, if, and I think <laughs> really accurate passes. He's smart enough to make a good decision to where it's like, if he feels like, you know, the heat's coming instead of maybe trying to escape it, you just, just, bear, you know, eat yeah. it. like just, you know, yeah. whatever. I, he's, he's smart enough to, I mean, he's a smart, smart dude. And I think they, they will, they will, and he and, doesn't want to, and Kellen Moore is a, hurt himself more. is a smart, is a smart guy too. So he, they'll make adjustments. You know what? So is Mike that. McCarthy. Mike McCarthy he, is. He's a smart guy he too. Is. He is. And I think he's uh, endearing himself a bit more to Cowboys. Completely agree. Lately. I like the guy. I think he's. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't, I, I don't feel like he shows a whole lot. No, he's, I think he's, the Dallas media is really hard to like, to come from a new city and then face the Cowboys media. It's like, you probably put your guard up because they're coming for you. And they did. Uh, I don't. Really? Yeah, really. Dude, Dallas media is nothing compared to like Philly and New York. For the Cowboys? Nothing. Absolutely. Not, it's not even close. I mean, those... Well, I, I mean, think they're just generally like meaner people up there. 
Right. Like the fans are meaner too. Right. But people are just like more abrasive there. But there's like articles being written after wins about, you know, what Mike McCarthy did wrong. Oh, uh, like clock management. Yes, stuff. like the clock management thing, which has taken on a life of its own. It's yeah, like just but it was pretty it was, bad. It was bad, but you know what? We're winning and just trust that the guy, like maybe he's not doing everything one hundred percent perfect. Right. But what coach but you does. Wouldn't. But that clock management stuff was <laughs> real bad. He's, like he's feeling it out. Yeah. But but yeah, I think that's what like he knows he was he's come under fire a lot um and so maybe that is why he has put a little bit of his guard up but when you get him away from the press conference with like a zillion people and mics in his face like i heard him on that interview that he did um on intentional grounding on the ticket with david Moore and robert wolanski and he sat and talked with them for like 30 minutes and it was really good really good stuff um a lot like about his family and where he came from you know, he's a good dude. Yeah, um, and he talked a lot about Ted Lasso, which is one of my favorite He shows. did, yeah. which is cool, because when I watch Ted Lasso, I'm like, this is so real life. Like, real life coaching, like, this stuff's important for, yeah. for teams. Like, you've got to connect. You've got to, like, you know, be endearing to your players and, and all of that. And just be nice. Dang yeah. it. Just yeah. be nice. Yeah, and I want to I want to talk about some of that stuff, this, like, as far as youth sports, coaching, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. But before we move on to that segment of the show, let's talk about MSU Flower Mound. We had a chance to visit um, with Randy. I've never I always want to say Cannibal. Cannibal. I know. It looks like Cannibal, Cannibal without the R. Randy Cannibal, who's super, super awesome, a uh, big supporter of the mom game, and uh, came in to tell us a couple weeks ago about MSU Flower Mound. And it's Midwestern State University in Flower Mound, and they're here to help you complete your bachelor's degree, that one that you may have never finished. Or maybe you're at a local community college and looking to transfer. Our programs are designed to help advance your career. The degree programs are offered completely online, which is great for the working mom or a adult learner, offer programs in nursing, respiratory care, radio, rate, radiologic, yeah. radiologic, radiologic, <laughs> this is radiology, not going well for me, <laughs> radio, radio, radiologic sciences, listen, if right. you're interested is in that, you know what I'm talking about, radiology, radiology but radiology, radiologic, <laughs> radiologic sciences, teacher education. I'm moving on. You now. need to go back to school, human resources <laughs> and much more complete your degree in as little as three semesters up to t from, or as little as three, bless my heart, as little as three semesters up to two years. I need to go to MSU Flower Mound you and do. get my S together. I think they could help you with your English. Although the courses are offered <laughs> online, they have a dedicated team and campus located in Flower Mound for all your in-person student services needs. And I need to go there and learn to read and pronounce words. So thanks to MSU Flower Mound for being a sponsor of the mom game. Mm -hmm. All right. We were talking about coaching be nice ted lasso yes. so we had a we talk about youth sports on here quite a bit we just do because we're right in the middle of it yep. right both of our kids or all of our kids are in youth sports so we had a tournament um last sunday and it's one of those all day things and so it's like you know you're back and forth and looking at the bracket blah blah, blah. so we start at 8 30 a.m so 8 30 in the morning and it's you know, you, you play and if it's like double elimination, but then things are moving really slow. So then they're like, okay, we're not doing double elimination. Whoever, if you win all your games, you'll go to the championship. And, and then the, the team that comes out of the basically kind of losers bracket, they'll go to the championship. And even if you've already beaten that team and you're undefeated, you're still gonna, whoever wins that game is going to be the winners, which mm -hmm. is fine because it was going really late. So we start the last game at like, 8 45 p.m oh my so we've gosh. already been there for 12 hours oh. but we uh, we were lucky enough to where we could go home we were close enough okay. to go home in between but the other people on our team they weren't they're just like and so camping they're just out like, in their cars yeah or well or they would you know go to a restaurant grab yeah. some food or whatever anyway we're playing in this final game and i don't know if i've ever seen a coach rub me the wrong way more than this guy mm. just constantly coach of the other team yes yelling i mean it at after every every pitch it's yelling something at his players at the players and just so animated and so disgusted when things didn't go his team's way constantly questioning the umpires and granted that's going to happen in games 
whatever. But it, it was so bad that it ju- you're, you're just like, come on, man. Like, did anyone it, say anything? Oh well, we, I mean, all all of us are kind of like, dude, like, let, like, uncle. Yeah. And then he's questioning the you know calls by the umpire. <laughs> and listen, these umpires they're they're getting paid like forty five bucks a game. Yeah. They're not. They're amateurs. I mean, they're you know. <laughs> You, they're not going to get everything right. And, and of course, is that upsetting? Of course. But it, it, it usually it evens out. Right. You know what I mean? In the big picture, but that's like, not what it's about. Like, for example, yeah. th- this kid on our team is pitching and he, th- he throws a pitch and, uh, you know, in la- and at this point it's late. We're all, everybody's tired. It's quiet. And so the coach is like, oh, that, 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 that was a ball. And the ump's like, yeah. And he was like, you sure about that? And he's like, yeah. Oh my gosh. He's like, oh, okay. Just, just making sure, just making sure, making sure that was a ball. And so then, you know, our kids out there, you know, and, and that's rattling him. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. so he, he's become, he became a complete distraction. Wait, Henry was pitching? When no, that Henry wasn't oh, okay. pitching. Another kid on our team, but he just became a complete distraction from the game. Yeah. That they, Don't it, make yourself the story. It, and it yeah. was just unbelievable. And I just thought to myself, like, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess everyone has their coaching styles, but when you're talking about 10 year old kids and, and like constantly berating them, you know, while they're playing a game, yeah. it's just unbelievable. Just ridiculous. And it, and I think to myself, like what kind of example, like if you're in, and listen, you're, if you're a coach of a, of a little league team or a youth sports team, like and I understand you get fired up, but you you have to you're setting the tone for. They're all gonna they're think all, that's okay that to that's yell okay. at people, yeah, and to yell, yell at the other and team. yell at and yell at the other team and yell at the 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 umpires, yeah, the officials, whatever sport you're playing. I just was like, what are we doing here, guys? Like, the, it, at some point in time, yeah, yeah, when you're Rick Bonus and your your professional athletes are not showing the effort you want to show them, light like their getting asses getting paid a whole up. lot of money. No yeah. shit, light them up. Right, light them up. When you're 10 years old and, and you're getting yelled at by a coach that's supposed to, I mean, and I understand tough love and I'm not here for everything's wonderful. It's okay. I'm not, right. that's not what I'm saying. No. But like at some point you got to let the game breathe too. Like, dude, let the, let, let them just let them play. Well, the whole point of youth sports is, is not to train your kid to go get a scholarship for you parents. It's to get your kid kid out there learn how to play the game enjoy themselves and have some fun and you know what else though learn if they're how to, good then great right but learn how I, for me especially with henry and he's so competitive him learning how to lose has been the biggest and how to oh, handle that yes like because he's he's been pretty decent i mean he's not a, he's not super stud he's not he, he's pretty you know middle of the road he'll have good games whatever he his he's really into pitching and he has not played. He started playing for this new team and he's only had a couple of appearances, but they've not gone well. Yeah. And he, after the, his, t- this last time out, he beat himself up so bad oh. and it's so hard, but I'm like, bud, if you're looking for success all the time, first of all, you picked the wrong sport. Right. Baseball is not it. And I was like, you're, this is, these are important lessons we're learning. Yeah. You have to learn. And what happened is if it, it'll, it'll start like with something, you know, maybe just a, a rough at bat. And then the next one comes up and then it just starts spiraling. And I'm like, okay, these are lessons that we need to learn. How do we stop things from spiraling? Um, how do you not completely beat yourself up if you don't have the best outing ever? Like, I, I just love sports so much for that because it teaches them so many lessons. And if they win it, you know, you teach them how to win gracefully. Right. Um, but how to have fun. like all those things are so many lessons to be learned from sports that I'm so it's so gut wrenching as a parent sometime. Like when your kids just get lit up on the mound and you're like, oh, gosh, you just feel it. You feel it for them. And then you're like, <laughs> but these things are so it's so they're so important. Right. Yeah. It's so important. You want them you to can succeed. learn a whole lot. About and you life. want them to be the best, right. right? You want them to win every game. I mean, and I'm competitive too, even as a parent, you know. Right. But you also have to realize that, like, that's this is that's how they that's how they learn. And I love sports for that. Yeah. Um, I just that, like I said, I, I was so blown away by the way this coach was berating these players and the the way he just the way he was acting. I just was like, man, that I'm I'm that's to be a distraction and take away that's from the kids terrible. on the field. And you would think that it's just, that's not okay. It's not okay at all. That maybe the parents of the kids, could, I, I was thinking like, Oh my gosh, would say something. How do, well, if one of the coaches actually, the, one of his assistants on his way back over to their dugout, like looked at the group of moms. Cause when he came out on the field for like the eighth time, we were like, 
Dude, it's right. 10, 15. There's probably audible groans. We've, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, I was like, we've been here for 14 hours. I'm it's 10, 15. Didn't get up there. Can yeah. we just please let the kids play and right. finish the show? Right. No kidding. I mean, and so anyway, it was, but the coach on the way, one of the other coaches on, on, you know, on that guy's team, he went by and he was like, I'm sorry about that. I'm like, I don't, I mean, I'm sorry for y'all. Like I, I just, I can't, just can't be a fun That's experience. Not, no. And then, and what if you those know? kids decide they don't like sports because of that guy? Right. You know, what know. if they don't I mean, want to play because they don't like being Maybe he was berated. having a bad day. I don't know. It, it, it seemed like this was very, yeah. uh, you know, on, well, on par for, for him. But it just was, I just, it made me sad for those kids. It's a little bit of a problem, I think, is adults, um, parents being mean to referees. I think that's everywhere. It um, is. It is. And I'm, it's not, and listen, it's not like I've never said anything you know, but, but I mean, it, it's like, you know, and it's, it's more like, oh, that one, that, that was a, you know, that was a strike of the last batter or what? I mean, it's never like, you know, but I, I mean, I'm, it's not like I'm just sitting over there with my hands in my lap. Like yeah. I'm cheering and I'm, you know, it's all a that weird kind of stuff, dynamic, but it the whole is thing. weird, but especially when it's like parent volunteers, right? And you don't really know what someone's experience level is in coaching, but you've got to have these parent level or these parent volunteers for your kids to play. That's what we're dealing yeah. with. Yours is a little more advanced, you know, right now with what Henry's doing, but with writers, it's like, you know, people are just starting playing soccer or something. And so you've got to find a dad, you find a dad that knows a little bit, or you find a dad that, you know, is a hothead and doesn't know a lot about soccer, but just knows a lot about yelling. But at Ryder's game a couple of Saturdays ago, um, his game was delayed. Like nothing was starting. We were all there kind of like, what's going on? There was no ref. Well, apparently the game before one of the moms and I think dads was laying into a 12 year old girl ref. Stop. 12 year old girl. Yeah. I mean, she was probably making 10 bucks, eight bucks an hour. Who knows? And they're desperate for people to come referee these little six on six and under, seven and under. Actually, they start at three and under level soccer games. So they kind of find whoever. Like, you know, usually yeah. it's someone who's who's a, a young soccer player themselves. But yeah, apparently, and so that ref had left, so we didn't have a ref, and so everyone was talking about what had just happened. There's signs all over the field like respect our refs, respect our refs. It's like that's a it's a thing. Yeah. It's real and it's it ridiculous. Is. And I don't know how any sort of like grown person can think that yelling at a child about a six U soccer game is acceptable I ever know. or it's 10 U baseball, I whatever know. it is, get a grip. You're the adult, like be a leader and show these kids how to act. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of sickening and we really do need our refs so we can all play these games. Yeah. And we do need coaches too. So I have mad respect for people that oh, spend sure. their free time, especially, you know, the volunteer level coaching these kids. Um, but some of them just need to, Get a grip. Yeah. And I, I you know, and I think it's, I, I, it's not like I have, I've gotten caught up in the, in the moment when you're, you know, you're cheering for your kid or you're whatever. I mean, it's, it's like I said, it's not like I'm saying like you, everyone should sit there with their hands in their laps, like cheer, have fun, you know, whatever cheer for your team. Um, you know, and it's okay to question stuff, but just do it with respect. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that's what, you know, I think as a coach, you have the right to question things. Um, I think that, players should leave that. I mean, that's one thing like oh, if Henry should, yeah. ever questions, like a, he, there was a play at the plate and he called him safe and he turned around and he like pretended like made the outside. And I was like, Oh no, 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 no. You leave that up to the, yeah. Baseball's tough. Cause like when you're talking about balls and strikes, that's oh, gosh. the whole and game. Listen, people, that's a lot of and, a referee, right. like implementing yes. themselves into the the structure and of the game. I mean, you look at major league baseball umpires yeah. and people bitch about them incessantly. They do. Can you imagine the training that those guys have compared to this guy? I mean, yeah. this one guy, I mean, the one guy that was the home plate umpire, bless his heart. He kept talking about how old he was like that. He was like, I mean, once you get over 60, you need water. You need a bunch of water, all the water you can get. <laughs> like he looked like an Eddie Murphy character, That's like funny, like on nutty professor, you know, where like he, Eddie Murphy dresses up as all the guys. He yeah. looked like one of those guys. I was like, he could absolutely be in an Eddie Murphy movie. And he was, <laughs> ab he was hilarious. And like his motions, like I loved his motions. Um, but I mean this again, this guy's getting paid 45 bucks to yeah. be out there for, Let's you know, just be long. nice. Let's, yeah, just, be let's nice. just be nice generally and in I think life in life and yes. in youth sports and in youth sports. <laughs> um, talking about getting lit up though and watching your kid. Oh no. Ryder was goalie again. Yeah. Um, on Sunday, 
uh, at his little hockey game. He's just started playing hockey. Um, and for some reason, he really is infatuated with being a goaltender. And I think it's, A, because he knows Kari, and he's been to his house, and he got to put on his gear, and it stuck with him. B, because he likes wearing costumes. And I, I think I he feel, sees feel this like that. as, like, a costume. And so he keeps asking the coach if he can play goaltender. So he played again, and... Um, it didn't go well. <laughs> it didn't go well at yeah. all. So we, he played against the best team that I've seen yet. These little boys were ridiculously good. Just firing, like coming in fast at him, firing off slap shots. Our defense was non-existent. Uh, this, our team was not helping him out much. It was 12 to zero, but I think he probably saw 40 shots. 12 to zero. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yes. Um, but he, like, if you saw 30 to 40 shots, he made a lot of saves. True. Uh, but Silver 12, lining. That's good. Yes. So what was his, how did he handle it? Like, did he get it, frustrated? It could have been worse, but we were driving home and he definitely was sad. And, and this made my heart hurt. He said, I let my team down. I, uh, I know. I let my team down. I th Last time I let in eight and my whole goal was to let in less than eight and I let in 12 I was like well dude your team scored zero so right. even if you had only let one in you would have lost like right. it's not on you you know and then oh. I go into like well they could have been playing a little better defense in front of uh -huh. you dude. Uh, oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah mama bear <laughs> like, comes out it's like well pump, I mean about the goaltender yeah. a little bit don't hang your goaltender out to try no but I mean it was they're they're a good little team but this team that they played was a lot better um so and I told his coach, I was like, I think that uh, he might be trying to get out of skating by playing goaltender. So can we get him back, back uh, skating? Because yeah. his skating is like harder for him because he's a little behind. Some of these kids have been playing right. skating longer. Um, so this week he's going to be back skating again. And I'm really hoping I never have to watch him in net again because it is pretty uh, painful. Yeah. And it's well, and there are certain positions like pitcher and baseball, yeah. like goaltender in hockey, quarterback in football, yes. that you're just going to... You can't relax. You're, no, and you're going to... No, and you're going to... And, and if you're either going to be the hero or you're going to be the goat. Yep. I mean, and Henry had it the other day, uh, a couple of weeks ago, he playing a team of friends, they're up, and all he has to do is like, well, first of all, I blame my husband because he's the offensive coordinator. He was running like some hurry up offense. And I'm like, we are in the lead. What are we doing? No hurry up. Anyway, <laughs> so, okay, uh, this is back backtrack. So fine. first game of the year, football, mm -hmm. Mike's out of town. Henry did not play well. And he acted like the biggest jackass ever. And we got in the car and I lit into him. I didn't take a breath for five minutes. Oh no. And I sat, I mean, I was, because I, I listen, my, he's not the most talented, not that I was like, I don't care. I mean, I went nuts. I don't care if you throw eight interceptions, I, you, your attitude, that was embarrassing. Like I was, and I, it was embarrassing. You're, yeah. He's acting like a jackass and blaming yeah. his teammates. I'm like, oh, no. this is yeah. not how, we will not do this. Right. I will, and well, I was like, good. I will good yank you, your ass. Good for you, because I bet ass. he remembered that. Oh, I was like, I will yank your ass off the field. I'm sorry if things didn't go your way, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I, five minutes, yeah. completely. <laughs> and I try not to do it, and I, try, and I don't, I mean, I, I know this will shock people. I really don't cuss in front of my kids. Yeah. I did that day. Like uh -oh. I what and he just sat there. And then after that we calmed down and had a conversation. But I wanted him to know how serious I was about this being unacceptable behavior. So then fast forward 2 weeks later and he threw a, in that final drive where he could have just won the game against his a team full of buddies and he throws a team a, a pick mm. right to one of his friends. Oh no. And he handled it so well. And I was so <laughs> proud. Like he didn't act like a jackass. And so we got in the car and I literally told him 800 like times. A jackass. I was like, I am so proud of you. I am so proud of you. I am so Good. proud of you. I am I'm like, and I, we drive for five minutes. I'd be like, did I tell you how proud I am of you? Aww. And I was like, that's the, the stuff that matters. Exactly. That's the stuff that matters. Yep. And it matters all the way through your career. Yes. Like the NFL guys who are that way are that, the and, ones that everybody loves. And they're it, the ones that... Yes. And it matters in life, in yes. your work, in your job, oh, regardless of what career path you choose. You don't blame your teammates. You lift them up. You know, all this kind of stuff. Uh, you, you don't pout when things don't go your way. When shit goes wrong, you've got to figure out a way to make Let it, it right. Let it roll off and, your back. And, and bounce yeah. back from it. And, and so I was just like, it's so funny because that, you know, he threw the game losing interception for a touchdown to one of his buddies. And I have, I was so proud because I thought, okay, he's learning. He's yeah. learning what, that that's not, that that's not okay. And it's okay to be competitive. It's okay to be 
disappointed in yourself. It's okay to be mad at yourself, but you can't, you, you, you have to learn how to handle it. Yep. Very important. It's a huge thing. Job well done. I I felt like it was such a, yeah, I I did. I was like, and it was kind of like, okay, enough already. You're proud of me. Like, but but I just wanted him to know, like, dude, effing nailed it. And that positive reinforcement is really important. You know, they want to feel like you're proud of them. And 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 I think he wants me to know that he's learning. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Um, so I would say I would give you like a, a, on that Thank story you. Thank of you. your your parenting, and I was thinking about my mom fails from the past oh, yeah, week, right. and um, <laughs> I was thinking this week if I were to grade myself on my momming, mm-hmm. I would I would I don't know if it'd be failing, but it was definitely like a D. Sometimes I just feel like everything's colliding, and there's too much to keep track of, and I'm not doing a good job at any of it. I'm like doing an average job at a lot of things and not doing a really good job at the things that matter. And that's part of the reason I left my dang job and it's and it's a lot better now. But just all the things that we have to keep track of. So just in this past week, <laughs> sweet little Anna, I had a rough week <laughs> taking care of my three-year-old girl. Bless her. <laughs> and none of it was her fault. This is all me. So um, let's see. So for example, here's one thing. So Mondays and Fridays, she has half days, which is lovely because I can do that now with my schedule and I get a little more time with her. Wednesdays, she does not. But guess who went to pick her up last Wednesday at noon? The, the, The school brought her out to me anyways, and I brought her home and I was like, oh, I love my Wednesday afternoons with Anna, blah, blah, blah. It took me like four to five days to realize because I was trying to figure out the next week when I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to need help on Monday and I'm going to need help. Oh no, Wednesday is not a half day. And I'm, I sat there, I'm like, did I go pick her up on a half day last Wednesday? It's like, oh my God, I did. I picked her up on a half day last Wednesday and the school just went with it because they probably know that I'm like a little spacey. <laughs> they just brought her out to me and didn't say anything. I'm like, okay, well, I picked her up from school when she was supposed to be there for a full day. That's okay. That's one. And then I think it was on that very same day, I had her to go pick up Ryder because I pick him up at three. And so on her short days, she comes with me. And it's like, I don't know what y'all's school pickup situation is like. An S show. It's, it's, so it's chaos. It's, it's fun, you know, because we, some people do the carpool, but we do walk like a, we're the right. walkers, even though. I drive and then I park and then I walk up. So there's all these moms like out on the field waiting for their kids. And it just, and it's real fun. You get to say hi to the moms and the kids all run out and it's real cute. Um, but I lost Anna. Oh yeah. I had her with me. And so I'm like looking for Ryder. I say hi to this one. So is she a wanderer? (laughs) Apparently she's entering the wandering phase. She's going to start running on me. Yeah. So I'm like looking for Ryder because you have to make eye contact with the teacher and then they release the student to you. Okay. Same. Yeah. And, uh, the whole system, like it's fine. You should be able to handle having a smaller child and picking up a larger child, but I couldn't. And so I, I start looking around. I'm like, Holy shit, where is Anna? And I'm like, surely she's just right in front of me. Like, but got mixed up in all these kindergartners you know and nope 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 I have like one mom looking for another dad's like have you found her I'm like no so I have three parents looking for Anna all of a sudden I get a call from this other mom she's way down like walking back towards the car crossing this bridge like she was escaping me on purpose like she oh she wanted away yeah okay so then I the mom's like um are you looking for Anna I was like yeah I can't find her um, finally get her back and she's like dying laughing. She's, that was so fun, mom. I ran away from you. Blah, blah, blah. I was oh. like, I mean, I was borderline like what, like I couldn't find her. What am I going to do? So that was the same day that she, she wasn't even supposed to be with me because oh. I picked her up when I wasn't okay. even supposed to pick her up. So it was a mom fail on top of a mom fail. Had she been at school, I wouldn't have lost her. And she was supposed to be at school because she's supposed to stay all day on Wednesdays. Um, and then on Saturday, I was, I had to work at the tickets, uh, in, I did a remote in Fort Worth. So it kind of like consumed my whole day. So it was like, okay, I've got Ryder soccer and a soccer Kelly, Rick bonus, the aforementioned Rick bonus when he was mad at his team. Guess what? He is a really awesome dude. And he let Kelly like have that morning off to help me with all of the games. And so I was like, all right, you've got this game at eight 30 and you've got this game at one 30 or sorry, 10 and one 30. And so I'm getting them all set and getting Anna all dressed for her game so I can go on to work and Kelly will like have it easy. And then I get a text from Anna's team. It's like, great game, everybody. We'll see y'all next week, blah, blah, blah. I was like, 
Oh. Missed her game. Like, her game was at 8.30. I had it down for 1.30 in my calendar, so she completely missed her soccer game. Luckily, she's three, and it doesn't really matter, and she yeah. forgets about things. Sure. Because we were like, oh, she's going to be all upset, and Kelly was like, I just took her to, like, go have some donuts. Yeah, and then she was fine. But I'm like, all three of those things happened in one week to me. Yeah, but it happened. You're, you're, you are you're haven't hit your groove yet. You haven't I know. hit your star's groove yet. I guess not. Your I don't, hockey season I was groove. feeling very, like... <clears throat> I don't know. And, and Kelly's great, you know, but sometimes they don't mean to, but they'll say something like, oh, how'd you, how'd you screw that up? Like, how did, how did you miss her game? And you what know? did you say? Fuck off? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah. well, you try doing all the scheduling. Oh, yeah. And that's a whole nother thing. It's like, oh, we, I, that's what my husband's we're doing like. So much I'm like, shit. when did you, what, you've never made a childcare calendar. Like you've never had to find a sitter. Like even right. when I leave town, I like literally lay it out on a platter like here it is and i'm even giving you here's a little break so you don't get overwhelmed with the kids when oh i'm on a 10-day road trip or whatever yes i mean that dude i mean mike has he's in that in terms yes. of that like there's a whole set of issues being married to me <laughs> for sure but in that department he's got it made i that, know this dude doesn't know shit about schedules well, and, and what these it, kids are doing and i was like if i get if I, I, I we may have tried this like i'm asking my like what are do you know what our kids' teachers' names are, honey? <laughs> He's like, uh, 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 well, uh. <laughs> You know, like bring up Kelly one from like three years same. ago and i'm like yeah listen dude yeah, yeah. so anyway yeah it's Bless just heart. a and lot of shit not, that we're having to deal yes. with that we don't get credit for and i'm not saying no men deal with them i was raised by a man i get yes. it um but it's just that that largely falls on on it does on our can place. you imagine if dads were like doing all of oh, the scheduling shit. like no one would show up anywhere no. their hair would be all i also found out animist pictures because that was the game that was pictures and i had texted the whole group in preparation because i knew i was like kelly's bringing her to this game y'all please fix her hair because <laughs> i know what the dad ponytail looks oh, yeah. like it's like a like a dead worm <laughs> <laughs> it's not cute and it bless his heart you know yeah. like he's trying to do a ponytail and yeah. they've never had to do hair yeah in their life god love him god um love him. so anyway i was all worried about her hair and apparently screwed up the game time so okay we've that's got on me i know we have a few more things we want to discuss we do let's talk about um let's talk about lemons first let's talk and about then get into lemons. our final segment here okay on the show. sounds good so um one of our new Old but new, their back sponsors on the show is Baylor Scott and White. This is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It still is. Um, this is the month seven years ago that I was diagnosed with breast cancer. So it's a, a month that I spend a lot of time reflecting. And Baylor Scott and White helped me a lot through my journey. And they're here to help you. And we're so happy that they've partnered with us here on The Mom Game. So this is what they're doing right now this month. How well do you know your lemons? In honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, they are encouraging you to know your lemons better. Every year, more than one million people are diagnosed with cancer. We know the impact that a cancer diagnosis can have on your entire family. We're here to walk you through the journey by ensuring that you have all of the proper screenings through to survivorship. If you're faced with a cancer diagnosis, so let me tell you, there's a lot going through your head. And the best thing that you can do is to find a support system with your friends, with your family, and with somebody like Baylor, Scott, and White, because they are here to walk you through the journey um, from beginning to end. If you're faced with that diagnosis, the Comprehensive Cancer Care Services and team of oncologists on our medical staff at Baylor, Scott, and White, Fort Worth's Joan Katz Cancer Resource Center can give you the tools you need to fight back. The Joan Katz Cancer Resource Center provides support to men and women who have been diagnosed with cancer regardless of where they are receiving their treatment or direct medical services at no cost for most services. So even if you're getting your treatment elsewhere, that's fine. There's lots of wonderful places to be treated. Um, they can still help you out with all of the support that you need on that journey that nobody wants to be on. The center offers survivorship programs, education, support, and resources to help patients survive and thrive in their cancer journey. For more information, to connect with a cancer navigator or find out more about your lemons, contact the Joan Katz Cancer Resource Center at 817-922-2223 or bswhealth.com backslash the mom game. And then just on behalf of me too, I wanted to say this month and make sure I get it out there that like how important it is to be monitoring yourself for anything, no matter your age. I was 28 when it happened. A lot of times you don't start getting mammograms regularly till you're 40. Um, but I think, A, know your history. If there's any sort of genetic mutation in your family or any sort of breast cancer in your family, then stay on top of it. 
feel around, notice if something's feeling off. If you yourself are feeling off, tie, extra tired, whatever it is, just get it checked out because you never know what's going on with your body. And this is the Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Awareness Month. So this is the month that I wanted to make sure and put that out there because sometimes that frustrates me when you feel like you don't really need to start monitoring yourself till you're 40 ish. Right. I was 20 freaking eight, yeah. you know, so, and I didn't have uh, cancer in my family. So it's just something to make sure that you're cognizant of no matter your age. And that's my sad story of the day, but also my positive uplifting. Make Absolutely. sure you take care of yourself. It's a great reminder. Yes. Know your lemons. Know your, know lemons. your lemons. Thank you, Baylor, Scott, and White. Um, okay, so the final thing we wanted to talk about, I, I texted you this last night and just yeah. had engagement stories. Yes. And so um, I was watching, so you know I've, I'm a sucker for like Bravo, yes. Real Housewives and Vanderpump Rules yes. and Southern Charm. Like oh, those geez. Are, oh, it's it keeps going. Heavy dose. Okay. And so Vanderpump Rules started back and um, oh, I can't even, Raquel and James, I think his name's James. He's like the douchey DJ. Anyway, he proposed, <laughs> DJ. yes, he proposed to her last night and it just made me think about my engagement story and how vastly different <laughs> that they they were <laughs> so they go to the place where Coachella is which is like is that like Palm Springs yeah I think so So like there's no Coachella la I guess this happened last year there's no Coachella so it was available to rent so he rents Coachella oh. or wherever I don't know where Coachella is yeah anyway it's this whole thing they've got like a margarita machine and a d dancing people on sheets like you know those sheets that people <laughs> dance on they're like <laughs> Putting their legs up. Dancing people on sheets. Like, but I knew. I know what you're you know talking about. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> just this huge, elaborate, you know, production. And then he, you know, kind of, it's it, them, all their friends, and they're partying and dancing, and DJ, I, why is I can't think of his name? It's okay. Anyway, he's DJing, and then he, like, whisks her, or takes her back to this back little place secluded, and asks her to marry him. And then these fireworks go off, and I'm like, dude. And then Fireworks. They, fireworks. This and is then like they the, asked the him, like, yes. And then they asked him like how much it cost after after the fact. Like, dude, how much did that cost or whatever? It was like twenty five grand for oh my this gosh. engagement. And granted, they're on TV, they're doing all the shit, whatever. Like, put that shit in the But it did make account. me think about my engagement, and I wanted us to tell our engagement stories. Okay. Okay. So you want to go first? Mine to go was first? pretty much just like that. <laughs> just like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Just my without the dancing ladies on sheets, but yeah. everything else. Everything. Everything else? else was there. Yeah. Kelly knows that Coachella is just my spot. Uh huh. That's where I really like thrive. Yes. That's where I'm in my element uh -huh. in the desert, listening to some badass tunes with DJs. Yeah. Um. No, mine was in my grandmother's house. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> which is now my house. Okay. Which is pretty special because we sweet. we bought my grandmother's house. Um, and it was it was really sweet because I was going through cancer at yeah. the time. So I was like in a wig going through treatment and um, Kelly, not deterred by any of that, you know. So we had talked about maybe getting married before any of this stuff happened. And then it was really special because I felt like it it, it made us closer, brought us closer together. But his mom was in town from Canada Um his mom, who has now passed away from breast cancer. So I have that memory of her mm -hmm. being there. My parents were there. My grandmother was there. Kelly's son, Isaac, was there, who I was going to become a stepmom to. And he had the ring. And that made me feel really special, too, that he was in on it and was a part of it. And yeah. he and Kelly had been, like, scheming about it and how to do it. And we were just, I think we were, oh, it was Thanksgiving. Um, and we were, you know, watching football. And then after the game, it was like, I think everyone knew what was going to happen besides me. And so Kelly kind of gathered everybody around under the TV after the game ended and had his little speech prepared where Aww. he was all nervous. And I was, I remember I was in this yellow sweater that was like a turtleneck. It was just, I was sweating. It was like, I needed to be in like something totally different. Right. Cause I was sweating bullets. Um, just, I don't know. I was excited and nervous and, uh, you, you think you're like prepared for the question. And then when you hear the question, you're like, Oh my God, this is huge. Like, yeah, I knew I was going to say yes, but you know, it's like, ah. so, um, it was, it was really sweet and special and didn't cost $25,000 thankfully. Cause I would have been no. pissed at him if he spent, you know, Oh yeah. and the ring was pretty, you know, it yeah. was, it was, it was fun. Um, what's yours like? So I was covering the big 12 championship game in Kansas city for Fox both sports. Of ours revolve around sports. Yes. <laughs> Our proposals. And, right. And so he, I was like, he was like, you know, I'll come with you. And so he went with me. And, um, so I've got to go down to do, we get check into the hotel 
And so I had to go do press conferences or something. And, um, and so I go down to do press conferences and I come back and he's like three whiskeys deep. Like (laughs) I looked on the, like the table and I was like, what, what is happening? And he was like, Oh, I just got, went, got a couple. I was like, dang, Gina, like what, what's going on here? And so like, I sat down on the bed to like do some work and he like laid on the bed beside me and was like, will you marry me? And I'm like, (laughs) the fuck is happening here like <laughs> wait on the bed yes. beside you like, yeah we were like where'd you get engaged and i'm like uh post. like on a bed in kansas <laughs> in a hotel room in kansas city like you know oh but that's we were, awesome we were, i didn't know we were already story. living together and uh but it was it just made it kind of it just cracks me up yeah uh, but it's totally like if he would have done something in front of people or you know people like oh i remember when we were dating and they're like oh you think he'll ask you at a rangers game right and i was like i'll on and the, i'll say the no then we're not, not then that, then that means we're not getting married <laughs> like because that right. can't happen you're not who i thought you but, were right, you think exactly. that's the proposal so anyway, I, I just thought that might be fun to share our uh our I, I, stories i, I and really want to know I'm, more about laying on the bed when he asked you to marry you I, so anyway i thought it would be fun to tell our engagement stories <laughs> that I'm is not. fun you know who else um just got engaged who, uh, who, who we've talked about on this show before? Who do you think I was gonna say? I don't know. Courtney Kardashian. Oh, to oh to the guy. The candle. Remember the candle story? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Well. So now they're engaged. It's working She's out engaged for them. to Travis. She's engaged to Travis Barker. Barker. Is he Blink One Eighty Two? Yeah. Okay. The drummer. Blink. Oh, I feel like very hip right now. Yeah. You know the only reason I know that because he was on a reality show with his wife years ago on yeah. MTV. Shanna something. And I watched it. Oh, you would be all Dude, over that reality, reality show. TV. I know. Well, I kind of watched the Kardashians uh, enough to like. I don't watch them anymore. But right. I had a phase. Yeah, and I, I, I did too. I yeah. did too. I'm not trying to Kardashian shame you. I think you were. Um, I, think, I, I, think, <laughs> I did. I, I think was, you did. And then you're like, oh, judgment. I watched it too. I did. You're Something right. about you felt like you had to shame me there. I, I, I think it's one of my biggest regrets in life that I ever gave that my attention i know but i I prefer to keep my attention on things like summer house southern oh, charm gross. vanderpump <laughs> rules and the real housewives of beverly hills that's a lot to keep up it makes with me so it makes me feel i've told you this it makes me feel so normal i like because they're so crazy yes yeah they're all lunatics yeah but like this makes me feel so is that all housewives housewife style shit like it's just a bunch of rich people oh my god they're so that are snotty so and nauseating. like worried about so rich. things that don't really matter right yeah yeah but um, it makes and that and that makes me feel like i am a decent human and i care about you important are. things why is my hat so weird? i bet that i wonder if if their son threw a fit on a football field, how they would handle it. I bet you they're not doing the right thing. I bet you they're not. Bet you they're not. They're probably like, you tell them. Yelling at that their That was their fault. You're the best, You bet child. they're not yelling at their kid for five no, minutes. No, but teaching them a lesson about, to... about how to act in life and on the football field. Um, um, okay. So Courtney and Travis got engaged. And I don't know why I'm like... I, don't, I, a little I feel bit, like a, I'm a little bit interested. I in feel like a thing. lot of people are obsessed with this. They though. are. It's because it's a little bit outrageous and it's different because so she's a mom of three. Right. Is and that like, it? I feel like she pops out a kid like well, every that's other just year. The other Kardashians. Okay. They all do. So many <laughs> they kids. all pop out a lot of kids. I'm pretty sure she has three and she said she wants another with Travis. But he's got kids from that other lady, too. So they're having like a blended family. But I think. It's just like you follow her whole thing with Scott. Like everyone followed the saga of her and Scott Disick for a long time. Scott Disick, what a train wreck that guy is. He's a train wreck. But he's like, he doesn't doesn't look like Travis Barker at all. Right. He's actually, (laughs) this is strange to say, he's a likable train wreck. I know, he is. It's really weird. Well, and his sisters still like him. Like they're not dating, you know, they still call him. Her sisters. Sorry, her sisters. Like they call him like a brother. Yeah. So obviously he's likable. Like, yeah. But I could I could see where he'd be terrible to date. But he was like I thought he was pretty attractive, kind of. I mean I wouldn't. He's not like my type, but he's right. a lot more attractive than Travis Barker. That's what I'm getting at. I'm like it just kind of blows my mind this Takes- whole thing. I was like oh she's like having some sort of midlife crisis. She's dating Travis Barker. Like this isn't gonna last. Like they're making out in public. They're getting tattoos of each other. Right. They're making candles that but- are. I know that we've talked about right. what the candle smells like, but it, they talk about like sex a lot, very yeah. openly. And they have kids that are like old enough to listen to these things and see their Instagram stories where they're making out. Yeah. Well, um, it, ta- it takes all kinds to make the world go round. Right. It does. Like, and it, and, and just, thank goodness we all have different types. Like, no, that's true. You know, that's true. Because I think the, I, yeah, everybody needs love. 
Everybody needs love. I don't know how Everybody I feel about love. PDA though, like that, like hardcore um, PDA. Yeah. Um, so that was just something I wanted to mention. The other thing, Emily, I have to get it out okay, here into okay. the world and okay. we're going to do it today. Okay. Um, because I've been putting it on the back burner for a while and this is something I really want to bring uh, to the forefront of our conversation. A little concerned. Go ahead. Kids have mullets again. Oh, so many mullets. Oh yeah. That's Why? It. Why is this happening? It's just a fad. It, it'll go away. But Do, oh yeah, it's a big player Are right you now. seeing it? Oh, are you kidding? It's everywhere. Why are we oh. bringing mullets back? It's like the worst hairstyle ever. And it's not, it's not ha ha think, cute funny. It's, it's, it's not, it's not cute. It's, it's, it's terrible. I it's think, just, I think it's these dudes way of being like, I'm in charge here. You I'm think? in charge. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah. They know they don't look good, right? Ton of hen, uh, I don't know if they're that, I, I don't think that's what they're going for. But yeah, a ton of Henry's friends. The guy who picked Henry off and, and took it to the house for the <gasps> game winning has a mullet. And he rocks it. I mean, he loves it. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a ton of kids. I'm not prepared for oh, this. Oh, you better saddle up, girl. And if it's not that, it'll be something different. Like, I think I can handle most things. Yeah? I yeah. mean, it was a, for like, a while. Was, like, some Henry, kids were doing mohawks for oh, a while. Henry I was wanted, like, that'd yeah. be cute. Okay. Whatever. Henry did a mohawk for a while. Yeah. I can't ever imagine Henry doing uh no. no, but I mean, if he wanted not to, from, but not from what I know about Henry, is right? Because like, he's he very doesn't, yes, he doesn't. But if he wanted to, like I'd be like, get after it. I don't care. You would. That's one thing. I now, would. Mike would have a. Mike would be like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, literally, it'll be like two weeks. I'd be like, let's go get your hair, tighten up, tighten up your fade. I'm like, what? <laughs> Dude, you just tighten up, tighten up your fade. I'm like, we just had a haircut, huh? Like. Things are right. Like, yeah. Anyway. Well, it's good. It's good to stay on top yeah, of it. Yeah. So, oh yeah, mullets are a thing. They're, just get get ready. We mullets talked about how uh, we don't have really a uh, soccer coach for our team because none of the dads were like into it. Kelly's busy. The guy we hired, you know, we pay him a little bit. He's a high schooler. Right. He's got a good mullet. Oh yeah. Like does. the soccer coach. So I yeah. see it every week, and I'm like, okay, I don't think this is just him. I think this is a thing everywhere. And then then at the hockey rink, you know, a lot of the hockey guys do, and that's where. I thought maybe it was acceptable as like a hockey player thing. Like Mike Madonna had the flowing right. rocks, you know, oh but no, this is like white. It's spread. everywhere. Yeah. That's one thing I'm going to ban in my house. Are you? Yep. Uh, and you know what? Don't say it out loud mullets, because then he's going to want it. Mullets and drugs. But, okay. <laughs> Stay away from gotta, mullets gotta, and drugs gotta, at the Forbes house. Take your battles. There we I'm go. I'm sorry. That I can the, deal with a lot of things, but I'm not going to have a child with a mullet. Forbes family values. No mullets, no <laughs> drugs. Okay. That's before right. we go, we got to uh, promote that the mom game app, or sorry, mom game home invasion. Yes. Is I'm coming. pretty excited. It is coming. That's I will be funny. spending the night at your house mm -hmm. November 2nd mm -hmm. and super excited to announce that we have a sponsor for the Mom Yay. Game Home Invasion. It is Cane Rosso, which means we get to uh, eat more pizza. Eat more pizza. And um, so, yeah, we're super excited. So I'm staying at your house on November 11th. You're at my place, I think, November 16th. Mm -hmm. And we're just, we're going to document it all. You get document to come with me all. to one of Anna's soccer games that we're not going to forget about. Amazing. Remind me. <laughs> exactly. Okay. It's going to be fun. And we're just going to document it. I'm going to give the perspective from Julie's house. You're going to give the perspective from my house. It's going, I can't wait for you. Like. They're going to be so completely different. I, oh, well, I just can't wait for you to like find shit and be like, she really is this crazy. <laughs> like, she, it wasn't just a front. Like, she's bad shit like um yeah and and i but i too um i feel like i'm gonna expose some things with you as well i i mean i'm pretty i pretty much put everything out there <laughs> this is true. as is well I i'm feel not like i feel anything. like it's a challenge yeah so no, yes mom game home invasion mom game home invasion presented by connie rosso yes is coming coming in november it is so excited and then um we'll also have another mom game after dark yep. presented by noble vines that one's coming up that'll yep. be the usual where we're at home our own homes yes <laughs> drinking wine um and then we're gonna have bob sturm on next week um here no, on we're the not show. we're doing after dark when we're together remember oh yeah okay there we go there we go we're, which will be even more fun because the two of us will be together that's right we are gonna have another mom game after dark but we two, together. we're doing a mom game after dark at each one of our houses remember that is right on stay on top of it. i can't you gotta, right, keep, me, you gotta keep me honest right. but yes we have some fun guests coming up Sturm next week yeah um should be fun which will be great it, it, it will okay this is we ran awesome. the gamut em we did mullets and <laughs> beautiful
youth coaches, sports coaches. Yep. And go Cowboys. Sports go Mavs. Go Cowboys. Home opener. Go Stars. Go Stars. Go Stars. All right, that's it. We'll see you next week with Bob Sturm. As Josh said, I got my peace signs ready. I got my peace signs ready. Bomb, Bomb game. game. Out. Out. Out.